<laughs> yeah, we didn't. We just threw the topic out there because we felt it's, it's something good to discuss. We didn't. There was no particular reason. Really. It was something that felt really, really good that we should all talk about this. Um, and it's so good when we get to something that feels like that. that yeah, this, we should talk about this. But pretty much, uh, I don't know what I want to say is that some of the things that you have said that touch me deeply, you know, like. Um, I have to clarify that I don't, that for me, um, I see my best self as my worst self, and my, and my worst self, I see it as my best self, so I don't have those dichotomies, dichotomies in my mind. Um, you know, and um, I'm not saying this is how everybody is, or every, much less that how everybody should be, but I pretty much embrace everything I, I done, I have done, and everything I do uh, with an open heart. Even if sometimes breaks my heart, that's how I learn. That's how I learn. That's how I um, move through in this path. You know, is embracing everything that I am. And I also see people that way. You know, I don't see people in fault. If people see me in fault, that's their mind. That's how, like you were saying. That's that's how their mind works. But I'm just so happy. I don't see people in fault. I see people where they are um, in their path. And, uh, myself, I just see myself as as a practitioner, as a very devoted practitioner. Um, I'm very protective, protective of all the students and everybody that comes here. And I'm sure, especially when I started, I made many mistakes, you know, and they were very painful. Um, yeah, because from the very beginning, I, I, I never wanted to separate myself from anybody and act myself like I am superior, you know. <laughs> Just putting myself on a, on a platform and teaching from that platform, I couldn't do that from the very beginning. So being on a more parallel level, it was very painful. And, uh, and now, now it's not painful anymore, um, or at least not how it was. Uh -huh. Is the only way I, I can teach. Like, yeah, we are all human beings, and I don't see human beings as having faults. <laughs> we are human beings, and everything is acceptable, and everything is energy to transform. Is how you call it? Mists for the meal? No, grits for the meal, or something <laughs> like. Everything is grits for the meal. Yeah. What? Grist. Grist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like grist. Grist. <laughs> it sounds similar. It sounds similar. So I go by the sound because it's not really my language. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, a, you know, it's, yeah. So it's a very tantric vision of mine of seeing everything as, as the path and ignorance transforms into enlightenment and ignorance intrinsically is enlightenment and and vice versa, and vice versa. So I don't see life in compartments. Um, so anyway, just just trusting that, uh, that uh, I just want to do the best in, uh, in every situation, the best I can in every situation, and, and learn from, from that, from those situations, and continue, continue in this path. I don't know. Um, I, I really, I had children uh, when I practiced from the very beginning. I had children already, so my time was very precious. <laughs> I was there for the teachings. I, I didn't care much about the teacher. I, I cared about the teachings. 
just give me the teachings, give me the teachings. I want the teachings, and then I would just go home and practice and do all the retreats I can. I want the teachings. I want the teachings. Um, and then, and then where I learned, you know, that some teachers say, you know, you're gonna go with other teachers, or you have to only take me, and you cannot do this. I, it's, I, I don't understand that. I just don't understand that. Um, time is precious, um, and we really have to realize who we are deeply, deeply. Um, and also, I just want to talk about another topic that is um, ferocious compassion. That compassion is not always nice and kind and goody-goody. Mm -hmm. Compassion, the other side of compassion, is could be ferocious compassion. And, um, it doesn't come from anger, it comes from compassion, that's the difference. Um, and I also recently uh, read a story from the Dalai Lama. They were talking about the abuse of women and he took a cup and just bang it on the table and said, the stop has to be abused and all the table shake. And then people understood because it's the Dalai Lama. But I don't know. it also refers to this practice, you know, and, and to stand up from that ferocious compassion when we see things that are not, that are not in accord with the Dharma, uh, the Dharma that runs in our veins, not some kind of Dharma in uh, some place else, from the Dharma that runs through our veins, we need to really throw ourselves in that emptiness and put ourselves there without concern of what's going to happen to us. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very different to be led by your feelings in, and emotions before encountering emptiness. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. And then another thing is being aware of your feelings and emotions once you have encountered emptiness in the context of emptiness then it's very different, because then you can really own your feelings and emotions without being dragged by them. So, it's, so that's why he's saying you need a teacher, and the basis of Zen is emptiness. And like Roshi was saying, and I love what he said, like a teacher that having had the experience of emptiness is as useful as a pocket in the back of a t-shirt. <laughs> 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 or on the back of a t-shirt. <laughs> it's a very humorous way. <laughs> you asking me? Both, both of you. The question is, how do you know? How do you know if a teacher is a true teacher? I mean, I know you're a true teacher. <laughs> you know, you have to risk it all. And then you risk it all, you find out whether that was a true teacher or not. You know, because... You can get hurt. What? You can get hurt. Then you heal. Mm -hmm. And it's really these days it's very different from it was when, how it was when, when I practiced. Or maybe Roshi was lucky with my Sumi Roshi. I don't know. But I went through a lot of emotional abuse by a teacher. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I always follow my heart. I always follow my heart. And even when I encountered that uh, he was not a true teacher, <laughs> true t-shirt, no. <laughs> a true teacher, or he was not the right teacher for me, my heart saved me, you know, because I was following my heart, my true heart. So yeah, emotional abuse is not uh, uh, appropriate. But when I practiced, there were not that many te teachers. So I went through it, you know, thinking that it's, it was gonna, it was gonna be good for my ego, it was gonna be good for my ego. And at some point, I think that uh, taking risk just liberated me from, from that teacher. And, uh, and another teacher appeared on my path. So I thought it was kind of, it's kind of magical, you know, how we follow this path and we risk it all and then the next door opens and it's all 
emptiness, you know, it's all risking entering into emptiness and, uh, and how things manifest from, the, from emptiness. Mm. So I just promised you, you take a risk, I'll be there for you. I'll be there for you. That's my promise to you. That sound good? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. And, uh, you know, um, when I became a teacher, um, I had so much wounding from my past, you know, and because this practice is about bypassing. I mean, I'm so, sorry, no, this practice is not about bypassing, but in, in the practice you can bypass a lot of personal stuff, you know, and especially before how Zen was taught, uh, we did bypass the whole personality, you know, it was a, it was a practice of transcendence, I mean, you, you transcend the personality and you jump into emptiness, and, and I was good at that, at, at jumping into emptiness, and trusting emptiness. But then I became a teacher and all these things at the human level. I had to work in so much stuff, and the, you know, in the relationship with the students, brought all, all these things from the past that I had not healed. So that's where, where we created the Great Heart Way, where we, we were able to heal our own personal stuff as we taught it and uh, together with the student. So um, for me, uh, teaching at the beginning, it was about protecting myself. <laughs> I, I visualized myself having a bubble around, around myself where I would protect. And now is I put the bubble on the student, you know, like the student is the one I protect. I don't need protection. You know, and, uh, that's how it changed. Before I was the one in protection, and now you know, I don't need protection. I can take care of myself. Um, <clears throat> yeah, for me, it, this was very important. Um, let's see what comes to my <laughs> my non prepare ones that um, in Zen, you know. We are not gurus, and our job is to set people free. Mm -hmm. So as long as we see that their projection happen to, to on us, we have to cut those projections and set the person free, mm -hmm. you know, not to uh, hold in those projections. And uh, I was telling the group um, in the mountains that uh, it had been more than 30 years, maybe 35 years, since I started practicing. And I was telling them that when I started practicing, I was so locked in, I couldn't express my emotions. I didn't even know what they were. I was trying to fulfill an image of myself that I could never fulfill, so I was always feeling uh, frustrated. And. Uh, of course, insecure, and uh, most of us lost, lost in the world, lost of who I was, and very uncomfortable in my own body, very uncomfortable in my own skin. That's when I started practicing Zen, and I fell in love with Zen, and the, the things I, I read, and that there was no dogma, and that it was all based on experience, so I just jumped in Zen, like, was my only, opportunity to find myself, to find the self that I had lost. Because I remember when I was little, I knew I was connected with myself, and suddenly I, I, I was lost, completely lost. And then, uh, so I was telling them, it had taken me 35 years to be okay with who I, I am, to be okay with who am I, I am. <laughs> and then, yeah, when people say, you know, that I'm not perfect, what do you mean? Like, I poop and eat? <laughs> you mean that? That I'm human? So I, there are different levels of imperfections, you know? There are imper imperfections you project on me, that's fine, that's all on you. 
And then for me, it's the perfection of being able to be who I am. That for me is the perfection mm. of be, be able to be who I am truly at all times. For me, that's the perfection that it had taken me so long to accomplish. That that's the perfection that people think of perfection. Of course not. Of course not. This is, but I feel that just the, this is the, the effect of all this path is be able to be okay with who I am all the time. Um, but then there is all these other levels of imperfection. Sexual abuse of your students is not okay. I don't care what your fucking dharma says. I have no interest. If you cannot respect women's sexuality, you are not up to be a teacher. And I'm so strong on that. I am on for, for Dr. Ford, and that guy should not be in the Supreme Court, and that has hurt me deeply. Yes. <laughs> I've been in so much pain. I don't have anger. I just have so much pain from immemorial time of how much we have been abused. You know? And it's pain in my heart. And when I heard yesterday that Rosh uh, Sasson wrote, quoting somebody else that said, take a break and we will continue our song forever. I just, you gave me a like. So, so I know you read it. Just think you gave me a like on that. Okay. I did it too. So I know you read that and I felt you, you you felt some release too, mm -hmm. that we will continue our song of peace and equality forever. No matter what. No matter what. And really, I'm not angry. I just have a lot of energy. Mostly, I have very, very, very deep, deep pain. And, you know, it's just the abuse of the women, the abuse of the earth, the abuse of animals of all the people that have weakless strength, you know, from the, you know, anyway. Mm. Uh, so, for me, I mean, I really love my Sumi Roshi that he had the humbleness to, to, to apologize and to make amends. And I really ha feel very honored about all those men that had the, the vulnerability and the homelessness that, to recognize that way, the, what they have done and make restitution, and they have been several in the white plum who have been able to do that. And, and I feel, you know, it's great, great with them. It's just they, they truly saw it. But for men that have abused women for their own sake, using the, the power that is so sacred to do that. <sighs> anyway, I really like sexuality, but not on a, an abuse level, it's not okay. Anyway, talking too much. So, I was telling them, I don't know what I was telling them. Anyway, it's good to have a, a free expression of this um, we do need to heal the, the inner child before we become teachers. Mm. Preferably, I had to heal it after I was a teacher because there was not a venue for us to heal the inner child. Mm. 